to start with a situation where I guess everybody is comfortable. So let's start with the sure while duality. So we have JLK acting on V, which is C to the K. Uh, and I want to uh, consider sure while duality for all Ks uh, together. And um, how do I do this? I group this into a symmetric monoidal category. Where objects are natural numbers. Think of it as, so n corresponds to the n-fold tensor product of V. And morphisms, uh, so Holmes between n and n is the symmetric group Sn if m is equal to n. So this is really saying V tensor n, so while dual uh, is the symmetric group. Um, and then if m is not equal to m, I have nothing. So you don't want it to be k-linear right now? You can make it k-linear, and then this is the group algebra, and this is just uh, yeah, zero, uh, zero yeah. Um, I don't care. Uh, it will be linear very soon. So I can make it monoidal by saying on objects, m tensor n is just m plus n. When you tensor m fold tensor product of v with n fold tensor product of v, you get, of course, m plus n fold tensor product. And then uh, what is the, what is the, uh, uh, the braiding? The braiding is, of course, given by, um, I take Sn and Sn, and I put somehow the, in terms of, of diagrams, I put the, the diagrams for m and n together, and I get m plus n. So it comes from somehow parabolic induction, if you want. And I put a little bit of space between. OK, good. So this is a nice category. Uh, and so this is symmetric. And if you want, you can draw a picture. So this is the braiding from two elements and three elements, for instance. So, but um, somehow, uh, if people want to study this kind of sure wild duality, they, they uh, want to not be in a symmetric case. Because when one, for instance, studied in terms of finding invariants of, of links or knots or tangles or something. So of course, we would like to, to uh, pop this up. And we want to have instead a category H, which, con which controls all type A quantum invariants. And so that means I, I want to quantize everything. And let's just do this. So I take here quantum GLK. I take here rational numbers in Q, and Q for me is generic. Then uh, I can still take the same object, uh, tens of products of this. But then the homes are the Hecke algebra. Blue is really hard to read. Do you have a brighter section color? Oh, yeah. Sure. So here I take the Hecke algebra of Sn, so deformation of the group algebra. So this is quantum. And here's just a Q. So and then, uh, and this I should, now it's really linear, I should replace this by zero. And it's still monoidal by taking on objects the same thing. And on morphisms I can now take parabolic induction for the Hecke algebra. That's fine. But it's not symmetric anymore. So and that's the whole point why we will get interesting link invariants. So it's, it's uh, braided. And so this picture is replaced by, I have to choose it. Oh, I had two. But I have to choose over and under crossings. And I choose it in a positive. So this is the positive. Uh, MN shuffle point. Okay, so uh, that's my nice uh, braided monoidal category. And so the whole point uh, of most of my work in the last years was 
uh, to upgrade such quantum invariants uh, to better invariants via categorification. So we would like to categorify this picture. And so here is the theorem. Uh, joined with these guys, there exists a categorification H tilde of H, uh, and by this I mean a predicate monoidal two category. Uh, which gives a H when passing to the Gordon group. So this is the theorem. So now, here are several uh, problems. So, so I, I should warn you, so warning, a uh, braided monoidal two category. This is somehow uh, a delicate notion. <laughs> yeah? Is the two category part playing a role in the Grothendieck group or Grothendieck as one? Uh, wait a bit. Wait a bit. I will, I will make it. Yeah? Um, so the heck algebra, what is that? that? That's some quotient of the group ring of the braid group or something like this? Yeah. Uh, so. Okay. So the heck algebra, so this is. This is the Heck algebra. And so this is a quotient of, for me, the set Q, Q inverse uh, version of the group algebra of the break group. It is the break group. By some quadratic relation. Okay, so uh, so let's first say uh, this warning. So, pre so monoidal two categories, I think many people are happy with, and there's uh, somehow an accepted uh, notion for this, in particular when they are strict. The big problem is this braided here. And uh, so I should say a little bit more careful, we proved this year, which I'm so the whole talk will be explaining a little bit what this theorem means. <laughs> uh, and for the proof, we actually, uh, we actually prove that it's a 2-2 category. And on the way, we use infinity categories to prove this. So it's something which is not an obvious thing. So let me start by saying what makes braided, one thing which makes braided difficult. And this is already coming uh, uh, in here. So, so, what is the difference between two two categories and just two categories? So, two two categories. So, this two is a, means it's you have an infinity category in the background and you truncate it at level two, and so that means at the at the end you can say it's a two ordinary two category, but you have to define what a braided monoidal two category is. Uh -huh. um, but what I want to say it's a shadow of something which uh -huh. which is somehow coherent in a, in, a, in an infinity sense. So now, um, so what, what is this, this braiding morphisms? What is the important thing? The important thing is that this, um, yes. So this has to be, this braiding, this has to be natural. So in the following sense, if I have Uh, let, let, let me ignore the, the crossings. Let me just, just make the symmetric case. So if I have a morphism F here, and I cross, then this should be the same thing as if I first cross, and then do the morphism F here. Okay? And so this I want to call the slide equality. And so the big problem is when you go through two categories, then this is not... This is, this is not an equality usually, so it's only an isomorphism, and then you have to keep track of coherence conditions between these isomorphisms, and and it's it's complicated to write down this this package, and just to give you to give you an an idea, uh, let me take the following remark. So if you if you um, write down a definition of a braided monoidal category like in Ekno's book, uh, then you 
for instance, so often can the choose that the braid relations hold for this braiding. So, and uh, you do this by drawing the braid relation. Uh, which braiding did I use? Yeah, this one. Like this is equal to that guy. So, and how can you prove this equality? So, what I can do, I can take this crossing and slide it. So, this involves two strands, and I can slide it through the other strand to get this guy. Or I can use instead this crossing and slide it through the other strand, and I get this one. And if you do this proof in normal braided monoidal categories, you get the braid relation, and it gives you two proofs for the same relation. But if you look in a higher categorical setting, two categorical setting, then these two things, it depends whether they should be the same or not. And so if you look in the history of definitions of plain monoidal categories, so for instance, I think one of the first definitions was kapranov voivodsky they didn't put any condition between the two. And then later, Weiss and Neuschel, they said, these two things have to be the same. So this is the so-called S plus equals to S minus relation. And so this kind of problems turn up when you want to write on a definition. Okay, good. So now, uh, let me explain a little bit what this theorem means. And also, maybe before I, I say what this theorem means, where can we get an idea of such a categorification from? Okay? So, and here, this is a well-known theorem of Sorge, which was mentioned already in, in John's talk. He attributed it to, to uh, Jordi Williamson, but it's for us in the symmetric group, so it's due to Jordi, uh, it's due to uh, Sorge. Um, so, he proved that the Hecke algebra of the symmetric group can be realized as the golden degree of a category S bim N, and this category is the category of Sorge bimodules. Okay, and so this is an isomorphism as set Q, Q minus algebras. So, uh, this morning we saw a little bit uh, diagrammatics of circle bimodules, but let me quickly say what circle bimodules are in two minutes. <laughs> so, this SPN is a certain subcategory of bimodules and graded bimodules. So, this genes, G means graded over ring Rn, and Rn is just a polynomial ring. I mean, I take complex numbers, but you can do it over any field, or even over Z if you want. A polynomial ring in N variables with the grading Xi is equal to 2. And geometrically, they arise as IC sheaves for, um, uh, for um, perverse sheaves in the equivariant derived category uh, of perverse sheaves on flag varieties. So, but if you have it as a sub, certain uh, subcategory of bimodules, I can, of course, tensor bimodules together. So they are closed under tensoring. And so that means this thing forms a, uh, is, is closed under tensor board. Right? So the golden ring is a ring, and this gives the multiplication on this, on this algebra. And the grading uh, turns into this Q shift. Okay. So, good. Um, and just to make it concrete, um, so inside there, there are so-called Bertsamelsen bimodules. And so they are just uh, the bimodules given by the ring itself, viewed as a bimodule, and the, the ring tensored over invariance over this ring with respect to a simple reflection, as I, like this. Uh, and so this category you can close under tensor products uh, direct sum and grading shift. So these are the both sums and y modules. So when I get just these circuit y modules as an item potent completion, of these guys. 
So an item fault in completion, I, I had the feeling today, everybody says this is very easy, but uh, I think it's something which is non-trivial. <laughs> yeah? I was just asking about, maybe I missed it. So you're, you're generating this under those operations with Rn and Rn tensored over Rn with Rn? Is there an extra... Tens up, the, there's an Si here. Okay, I missed that. Which is uh, Si invariant. So you take, I, I pick a simple Fair. transposition and every polynomial which is invariant symmetric for this simple transposition, you can move over to the tensor point. So, so I'm not understanding correctly, the item for completion is already a billion? No, 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 no. Both are additive. Oh, it's, it's a subject. Both are sure. additive uh, graded, uh, but this one is item potent complete. So yeah. if you think in terms of the Hecke algebra, uh, maybe I should say this. So these guys, they correspond to Hecke algebra generators. So this is the, this corresponds to one in the Hecke algebra. And this corresponds to the custom holistic generator, which is classically one plus SI. So I ignore the Qs. Uh, and this guy, this item potent completion allows us to decompose these guys into direct summons. And here you see the custom holistic basis. So this is more and much more involved than this thing. Okay, good. So now, if we have this, we can do a categorification. It's very easy. So we just look at our theorem. We say we categorify this by categorifying the morphism spaces. So objects are just the same. And instead of the morphism Hecke algebras, I just say, aha, I replace it by this morphism category given by a circle bound modulus. And I'm happy. OK? So the naive, naive thing is, Replace morphism uh, spaces by morphism categories. Okay, good. This works, of course. Um, we still we still have a monoidal structure uh, because we can. So, so for the for the for the multiply for the for the multiplication here, we take the tensor product over R n, but we can also tensor over the ground field, and we have a, a monoidal structure. And then the question is, what about braiding? And so here I give you an obvious uh, suggestion for the braiding. So I can just do the following. Um, I can just twist. So, so beta i, so the braid generator, say so beta i, i is braid generator x by twisting the right action, say, of rn by uh, the flip xi and xi plus 1 is flipped. So this is, this is very easy, and you can easily check this satisfies the braid relation. But uh, um, <laughs> so we are back to the symmetric case. Yeah? So, so this would be a, a symmetric braiding. And so this is not what I want. So this is yeah, this. Yes, I, I don't understand. So how can I was writing it green is not commutative. So how can we have a braiding? Uh, so, so, so the braiding is, is, so morphism spaces are this categorified Hecke algebra. So these are categories of circle bimodules. So you can take here circle bimodules for two, circle bimodules for three, and you can ask the question whether there's a braiding. Yeah? So first you tensor them together <laughs> via this. <laughs> Ah, of that, in that category, not yeah. category of surgery. No, 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 okay. not in surgery. No, no, in ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, well, we have to, okay. So, so but, but I want to have an honest, a honest spreading. And so, so the, the key point is, there is a short exact sequence of uh, R environments. of the form uh, like this. So I take this Rn, tensor over Rn Si, this Rn. So this is this nice Potsamuelson generator. 
uh, I can take the multiplication map to Rn. And what I get here is exactly Rn uh, Si. So this is the twist. So this is the twist. So that means, yeah? Sorry, I, I don't know if I'm understanding, but in the first case, like, are you saying change the i-th color with the i plus 1 color? No, I want, I want just to say, um, so I can put, a, if, I, if I have a category of bimodules here, I can say I break them by just, I want to act with the braid group, and I act on an object with the braid group by just saying I swap xi and xi plus 1. I swap xi and xi plus 1. This gives me definitely an action of the braid group on this bimodule category. But it's a very stupid one. In particular, it's, it's a symmetric braiding. Yeah? So, but, but it's obviously, it satisfies the braid relation. <laughs> so, and I want to take this stupid idea and pop it up in, and make it into something correct. And so the observation is that you can take this bimodule, which is Rn, but you twist the action of, 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 the, of Rn on one side by, by this twist. So that means xi acts not by multiplication with xi plus, with xi plus 1, and xi plus 1 acts by multiplication with xi. So and it fits into a short exact sequence like this. It's the kernel of this multiplication. And so what I can say, OK, I take this guy but replace it by this complex. And these complexes, those are the famous Fouquier complexes. OK? And so the, uh, the point is that uh, I can tensor with such a complex. Um, on uh, a, uh, on a complex of fine modules, gives a complex of so fine modules. Okay, so that means I can use these complexes and get an action on this category of circuit fine modules. And this is exactly what Rookie has studied, and he proved that they satisfy in the homotopy category. Uh, the braid relations. So he constructed a braid group action on the homotopy category. So, and I want to use this, so let me call this uh, maybe beta i for the i's braid group. So, and that means I can embed this into. The homotopy category of Sorgel Y modules. And so this homotopy category has still the same golden D group as this thing. And so it still categorizes the Hecke algebra. And I can ask the question can I replace this Hecke algebra by this homotopy category? And then say instead of having this naive braiding here, I write this braid in terms of elementary. Uh, generators, beta i's, and then replace every elementary generator by this complex, tensor them together, and then hope I get a braiding. Okay? But this square, don't square to the identity. No, they don't square to the identity. So, so, so uh, yeah, so beta i squared is not the identity. But how come you replace one thing with the other, and that's square to identity, and this does not? So, okay, so, so, that's a good point. So if I would embed all this into the derived category of Rn by modules, in here, uh, it would be the stupid braiding. It would be a symmetric braiding. And this is actually a crucial point uh, in our observations then, technically. But in the homotopy category of circle by modules, it's not the same thing. Because this guy is not a circle by module, for instance. Yeah? So it, in here, it's, a, it's an interesting point. So can you say that this uh, breathing is a kind of deformation of synergy structure? 
but uh, it kind of occurs. This difference you only see in higher homological degrees. Or yes, what? yes, you can see it like this. Yeah, and and actually, I, I want to see this embedding here and maybe down here as a like a kind of fiber functor. So this is supposed to be the analog of vector spaces, and and this functor is not necessarily uh, compatible with the braiding. So you can write down some other metrics. Yeah, I mean you categorify you categorify like the R matrix which you know from the Hecke algebra acting on these things. No, I mean if you have a map from braided category to symmetric category, then uh, which is does is not compatible with braiding, then usually you get uh, R matrix. Yeah, yeah, the, the only problem is uh, I have to make sense of what an R matrix is because I don't have vector spaces. Mm -hmm. But yeah. It's important. It's important. Some yeah. So similar kind of a question. So the uh, pretty model kind of two category at least we're thinking here is just like something with a bunch of functors from like the braid group into the category or something like this. Yes. This is, yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. So and and, and what Rukier did is he he showed that this. Uh, these Rukier complexes, when I tensor with them on this, this category here, they give an action of the braid group. Uh, and he, he actually made this rigorous in the sense that he, he gave explicit uh, uh, um, isomorphisms between the um, sort of relations of the braid group. But what is, what is not there, what is missing, is this naturality. So what we have to check is that morphisms slide through these predicts. Okay? Uh, so this is not a big question. What is naturality? So, and uh, I mean, this, these categories are pretty, uh, from my point of view, they are pretty complicated. So it's not, you cannot just sit down and check naturality. So, but let me look at this diagram here. So these guys, they have a diagrammatic description. So this is due to uh, Elias Williamson and Elias Rovanov. They have a diagrammatic description. Then you do item comp completion, which I find personally pretty complicated. And then you go to complexes, which definitely makes it more or less impossible to compute. So now I want to, I want to say a little bit about this, something about this uh, diagrammatics. So let me just look at this complex here. I don't want to explain the diagrammatics because it would take an hour to explain it. I just want to make it very stupidly. So I, I give this simple reflection a color, say green, and I, I take this sort of generating what some and by module, which is here. I just draw a line for this. And when you tensor them together, you just put the lines next to each other. And this guy is the unit element, because when I tensor with Rn, it doesn't change anything. So that's the unit. So I just write a little dot so that I remember that it was there. But it's really the unit. So usually, you would not draw anything. And then in between, I have my multiplication map. So that means this complex is just a picture, a line, and a dot. So now, let's try to understand what it means when I have uh, the green guy. Sir, can you uh, write down there? Yeah? The, don't, the podium. Don't, don't, don't write, write down, down, down there. Write ah, don't write there. Good. Uh, so then I do it. I open this immediately. So, now I have such a guy, so uh, and maybe I should draw it a little bit more fancy. I draw it like this, so, so this whole end, they re represent this iron, an iron. So this is a guy, I have it blue here now. This is a guy, tends to the identity, and I want to slide it through this sort of braiding, right? So I have this guy, and I have the guy where it slides through. And the color just indicate which simple reflection, so it's, it goes from blue to red. So what do I have to give? So in the classical situation, this thing is equal to this thing. This is slight equality. Now, this guy is a complex of circle by modules. In diagrammatics, this guy is a complex of circle by modules. Which complex is it? I draw it, I, I explain it in a second. But what I have to give is a, a map between the two. 
And I have to make this in a consistent way. So now let me explain how we get the complex. So we have here this morphism times the identity. So this is the blue guy on the right. Okay? Then I tensor it with these two crossings. So and these two crossings, they are of the form a line and a point. So in the first crossing is the red one. I have a, a line and a point with this guy. And the second one is a blue, a line and a point. So what you get if, if you tensor two complexes together, which are of length two, you get a, 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 a complex which has four terms. Here are the four terms. So here in the middle, you can write a, a direct sum. And on the, on the right, I have this blue thing. The same here, except that I have now on the left the red guy, and then on the right of it, these four terms. OK. So now what we have to find is explicit chain maps going from here to here. And so we computed it. And so for people who know so called diagrammatics, uh, here it's zero, uh, we wrote down explicit sort of matrices and, and maps which, which give this. Slide maps. So what we checked is that this can be made consistent. Um, and so, so the proposition is there are slide chain maps which are invertible. Uh, up to a specified homotopy. And so we actually can, can somehow follow up all these homotopies uh, very high up, and, and, and using sort of grading arguments, we can control what happens. So, but I was cheating in my argument. Oh, I didn't know a mistake. Oh, sorry, I have to move this now. I was cheating in my argument in the sense, I said, OK, let's do the braiding on here. But, but somehow, when I take uh, some one of these both summons and bimodules and I tensor with one of these Rouquier complexes, I end up in here. So it doesn't make even sense to talk about the braiding on here. It only makes sense to, there is only a chance to have a braiding on the complexes. So what I really do here is, I pretend there is supposed to be a braiding on complexes, and I want to check what does it do on specific morphisms uh, coming from here. Yeah? This are, is what I did. Are you saying I can't talk about the homotopy category of B SBM? You can talk about the homotopy category of this, but I didn't. So this is the additive ordinary category, no complexes. And the problem is, the calculations we do here, you can see them. <laughs> These calculations I can do. Uh, in this diagrammatics, but as soon as I have a complex and homotopies, then I have to have to be very careful because a comp in a homotopy category, two isomorphic things might look very different, and so I have to I have to make consistent choices, and we just can't do this. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, just making sure this is type A only, right? That's there's type there's a no only. eight valent vertex for for no, this. No, type A only. Yeah. But I think, but I think that it's not the problem of type A versus other types. It's other problems. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that means what I what I should make precise. What do I mean by restricting the braiding which I want to have to this additive subcategory? Okay. So so in which sense can I talk about uh, naturality or some braiding viewed on this thing? And so this is what I want to define now. And so this is a notion which we, uh, which we introduced, I think, first, which is the notion of a pre-braiding. And it's very closely to, related to things which we saw at this conference. So, so, um, so make precise. Some of restriction of braiding to be a spin. 
So when I do this in a in a ordinary setup of normal categories, let f from a to b a functor of monoidal categories. So a monoidal functor between monoidal categories. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, okay, so now I'm pre-painting. Uh, beta on F consists, I use the same beta as before for this other binding. I hope this is not confusing. There's not enough letters. Uh, consists out of iso isomorphisms of the form f of x turns out f of y isomorphic to f of y turns out f of x. Of course, these are beta x, y, uh, natural in x and y. Um, so, so what I want to want to want to do is somehow I I pretend here I have some kind of braiding, but I only want to say I understand what happens for, for things which are in the image of this functor. So this is this fx, fy. I want to braid that. Um, such that, of, of course, some coherence conditions hold. So I, I want to do two uh, generalized hexagons. So I can take f of x, tensor f of y, bracket like this, tensor f of z. And then you have to usually braid uh, somehow in the, the relations which, which come in braided monoidal categories. I can try to move uh, the x to the right. So f y, z, uh, x. And I can do this in two ways. So I don't write to the whole diagram, but you do the, the, the usual thing. You can either, um, what can you do? You can first use the monoidality and put this fx tensor fxy into fx tensor y, and then move it past the set. No, maybe I should first bracket. I should bracket here first. I use associativity, bracket here, then I, I put fy tensor fz together into fy tensor z using the monoidality, and then I move it past x, and I get this. Or you do it, you, you swap these two guys, and then you swap this. Because you have f of z times f of y times f of x. No? f of, no, I think I'm happy. I want to move this guy to the right. And then, yeah, I'm happy. And then the second thing is you can move this guy to the left. So, uh, f of x, tensor f of y, tensor f of z, to chirp, and then I go to f of z, tensor f of x, tensor f of y. Then you have again two ways. So, note that if f is the identity on A, so A is equal to B, then what I just get, this is just a brazing. on A. And so we recover the ordinary braided monoidal category. It's just a generalization, generalization of it. Okay, so and uh, uh, this sort of calculation here, this one here, you can state as a corollary. Uh, there exists a pre braiding on. Uh, so I want to write this. Ah. On 
the S bin. So I want to, to what I would like to write is a pre braiding where we have uh, these two categories where we replace this thing by BS bin, that's on the left hand side, and then in the target we replace this thing by the, by the homotopy category of several bimodes. So, but my theorem, I only studied it for one category, one other one category, so I can't do this. But I can do something very tricky and very stupid on the other type side. I can take these two categories where I have here one of these two things and replace it by just saying, I ignore that this thing what I put here is a category, and I just take isomorphism classes of Bortzamelsons or isomorphism classes of complexes of Bortzamelson, and I forget all the morphisms and everything between it. So this is uh, what I want to call H1 of this guy. So this is an ordinary category, and I have the obvious functor between it. So these are objects are still natural numbers, including zero, and the morphisms are just isomorphism classes of form of objects in B aspin, respectively KB aspin. Yeah, in, in, for all of them, for all n together. Yeah, so, so I just, I, I ignore all the higher, higher things. So, and, and this gives, this construction, which we write down here, gives such a pre-braiding uh, in this sense. Okay. So, um, but the problem is, <laughs> okay, this, this has the, has some of the chance to, to allow us to do calculations in this diagrammatic category, and then hopefully we have a tool to extend it to this uh, full complex of solid bimodules. Um, but the formulation of the CRM has the same problems as the formulation of braided monoidal categories in, in, in this sort of classical setting. So we have to keep track of all these isomorphisms. And so this is not something which is a good definition in, in higher categories. So I want to relate it to something which is a definition which can be somehow generalized to higher categories. Yeah? So are you collapsing your two category to a one category when you yes. do this? Yes, okay. in a very in a very stupid way. Yeah, it's it's pretty stupid. But the, actually, what we prove with calculations, it's it's more than just this. Yeah. So we can really do it on on a, on a higher level. Do you have? Uh, I'm assuming you have some trouble. Lifting in some coherence, right? This is like kind of why you're doing this, right? Yes, okay. exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And, uh, so it, I know that this is type A, but when you do this, so just dihedral types, you have mm -hmm. a very good description of those idempotents when you're doing this idempotent mm -hmm. diffusion. Can you describe those coherence conditions in a better, like, and not passing through this, uh, like, uh, one category setting? Uh, I didn't try. I, I didn't I didn't try, actually, uh, but it might be easier. But uh, still, I, I mean, the first step might be easier, but going to complexes is the same yes. problem. Complexes is hopeless. Uh, <laughs> you need some. We tried with some A infinity model. Uh, DG is too rigid in A infinity model, but it's it's you have huge calculations and you make choices and you have to make. Clear, sure that these choices are somehow compatible, it's hopeless. Okay, so, um, so I should, uh, so let me remove this. So now let me state a definition which allows to put this to a higher level and which also connects to things which came in the conference. Uh, so, so if I have the same set as before. F from A to B is a monoidal functor. Then I can define the centralizer set of F, the centralizer. So this we saw earlier. Uh, so this is a monoidal category. Sorry. 
So which has the following objects? So it's pairs of B and gamma. So B is an object in the target, and gamma is a half twist. Or half braiding, I should call it. Better. So this gamma is depending on B. It's an isomorphism of functors between B tensor F. So F is a functor from A to B, and F tensor B, where this tensor product is in the target category B. Okay? So this is a, a half braiding. So, and it satisfies, so this, this is the, these are objects and morphisms are just morphisms in B on here, uh, compatible with gamma in the, ob in the, in the obvious way. So you just have morphism on, on, on B and a morphism on this F of this. Huh? The obvious commutative diagram. So this is, a, this is a centralizer. And this we saw, for instance, in, in, in Laugwitz, Robert Laugwitz's talk, this thing. So note, if F is equal to the identity, which was already nice in the braiding situation, then this is just Trinfeld's center definition. So, and now it satisfies, I'm confused that I can't write at the bottom. <laughs> Let me go with this. So it satisfies the following condition. I have set of F times A. A isomorphic to A. So this is just a point times A isomorphic to A. I have my functor F here going to B. So and it has it has it satisfies the condition that I because this is monoidal by it, it, the monoidal structure is inherent from B. I have the unit in here. So I go from here to here via the uh, unit map tensor the identity and. Down here, I can go via some kind of evaluation map, which, which takes an element from here, which is on objects just taking this B, something from A. I take my functor F, apply it to A, and then I go down and tensor them together. So B tensor F of A is this functor down here. So it satisfies such a, a commutative diagram. And this diagram, this can be generalized. as a universal property to uh, higher categories or infinite categories. So it's a, it's a, it's a universal property. It's an it's a object set of F together with pointed maps like this, an evaluation map such that uh, it satisfies this diagram and it's universal with respect to this diagram. And actually, one can uh, realize this as a functor category from A to B, and then this is, this is really some evaluation. And this map, this pointing map, is taking the functor F and mapping it into functors from A to B. So it's a very natural construction. And so in this way, one can define the analog of pre uh in higher categories if I connect pre with this center definition. And this is done by the following proposition. So proposition, free paintings from A to B on, on F from A to B. Uh, so in the one category sense is the same thing as factorizations of F through Set of F. So that means I have F here. Uh, I have set of F here. I have a map down here, which is evaluation from there, uh, where I plug in here the unit. 
And so I want to have a lift here. And so, so there's a, a bijection between this and this. And so, uh, yeah, so it's clear what it does in objects. A has to go up here uh, via, so this should commute. So that means A goes just to the pair F of A in here. And this gamma is coming from the pre braiding over there. So pre braiding is sent to this gamma here, the second spot. And the B is given by this map F, which makes them just commute. OK, so and what is important here, I always thought I teach braided monoidal categories by saying I give the first hexagon, and then the second one is analog. But it's totally wrong, because there's a, there's a totally asymmetry in here. So, so the fact that this thing is monoidal, so this is what, what, what I need. So it's a monoidal factorization. This is the first hexagon. So this is number one. This is giving this monoidal, monoidal thing. And that it ends up in here. This is the second hexagon. And so they have very different roles. And, uh, <laughs> and this is uh, quite, quite important. So, but this sort of reformulation allows us to formulate everything in terms of, of centers. And then, uh, so I just say it in words. I wanted to, to formulate it, but I, I'm over time, so I say it in words. Then we get at the end a uh, categorification result. If we say, OK, we have a, a infinity braided monoidal infinity two category, where the objects are natural numbers here. The morphisms are infinity versions of the KB S BIM categories homotopy categories of circle bimodules with all the uh, higher structures. The braiding is given by this Rouquier complexes lifted to an infinity version, and it satisfies all these naturality conditions. So this is the end result. Uh, and if you want to have details, you should read the paper. OK, I stop here. Thanks. <laughs>